Well, I don't have a magic answer. That's the, the, the issue that every institution in America is trying to deal with. Because you know, I pointed out that you know, last year, I believe last year was the first year in which the majority of births in the United States were non-white. So that means 18 years from now, that's who going, who's going to be graduating from high school. And many of our institutions, especially the highly selective institutions, are woefully unprepared for that demographic shift um, in all sorts of ways. I think there are lots of institutions that say, oh, we'll just, we'll just skim the cream a little bit more. And, you know, and we'll be just fine. Well, everyone's saying that. <laughs> you know, it can't all be right. Um, 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 so it's a challenge. And I don't know what the right answer is. Um, we've been trying to do things like um, develop innovative programs to, to help students succeed. Um, I think one great challenge, you know, much in diversity in higher ed, most, almost all of the discussion has been about two things. Who gets in the door and who graduates? And I, I believe deeply that we have to shift the conversation to what happens between. Because there are huge performance gaps across demographic groups, uh, you know, huge ones. And, and, and the likelihood of getting an A or likelihood of getting an F. And, I mean, there's big differences that we haven't really explained, and we haven't tried to develop interventions to deal with. It's almost as if people think it's like written in stone, that that's the way it's always going to be. Um, so I think that's the next big frontier, sort of to deal with the performance gap. Um, but many people r really don't want to talk about it, um, because they believe that it will be used as an argument against diversity. Um, I actually don't agree with that. We will never deal with this unless we actually see what the situation is and then develop interventions and think about how we can. It, that is not destiny. That's not inevitable. And there are places, UMBC, uh, Freeman Robowski's program, has done incredible things. I mean, so there are places that have been able to do that, change that trajectory in all sorts of ways. Um, but it, it's, it's hard. I mean, you know, it's the hardest thing that I have to deal with, is sort of try to, to deal with sustainable change in terms of opportunity. Um, and it's e the more elite the institution, the harder it is, the harder the conversation is. So I don't have an answer. I've tried everywhere I go to sort of, it sort of, it sort of bring a perspective of, of uh, that really believes that, I mean, if we don't deal with some of these diversity issues, we won't fill our seats. We won't exist, and the country won't accept. I mean, and we don't have that level of deep buying into the problem that we need to have. And so, you know, if, if, if I were to, and, and there are people who are working, I think the Gates Foundation is doing great work to try to really deal with some of the tough issues. I don't always agree with where they end up, but, but they're trying to struggle with it. And, and I don't know what the answer is. You have to do the best you can, everywhere you can, recognizing that you can't do everything. Um, and one of the challenges I've had, I certainly had at NIH, was to sort of help the community come to terms with the realization that in spite of 30 years of programs for diversity at NIH, we never had more than 2% of the PIs African American, in spite of 30 years of program. In my mind, that means the programs aren't working. Not everyone agrees with that interpretation. There are people who, who say no, they've done lots of things. But, but it, 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 it was a hard conversation for the community to have in lots of ways. And, and so I, I believe that, you know, that you'll never get anywhere if you don't have these hard conversations. Um, but, but man, a smart person doesn't have them. <laughs> Someone who cares about their career trajectory doesn't have these. Um, because they're, you know, the risk of just having it explode in your face is everywhere. But I really deeply believe that if you don't have the conversation, you know, 50 years from now, we'll still be having the same conversation about change. And we can't afford that.